everybody. Today I want to talk about money and budgeting specifically. We have a single family income and we have irregular paychecks. So I want to talk to you about how we budget with all that. Most of you know if you've watched any of our videos that I have the privilege of staying home with our two girls. Um, one, well, the big one is at the big kindergarten right now, but um, for the past five six years I've had the privilege of being home with our daughters. However, that means that the job that my husband works, the income that he brings in, is that's it. That's That supports our family. So it becomes really important to budget. I found out early on that having a budget is pretty much the only way that we're going to be able to actually make it work and not be in debt. Because it's really important to us that we stay away from debt as much as possible. I mean, you know, it's we've we've kind of gone up and down in our in our married lives as far as being debt free and then having a little bit of debt. But it's important to us to stay as far away from debt as possible. I'm talking about, you know, the other kinds of debt that are really easy to get into, like credit card debt. A little side note, a few years ago I did, actually my husband and I both did, um, Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University and it completely revolutionized the way we look at money and finances, the way we want to move forward with our money. We don't want the credit card debt, we don't, we don't want debt because you know, we, we want to be able to live free. So anyway, after doing that class, and then I actually proctored the class a few times with my dad, it was kind of just in, like pounded into my head for about a year. And I loved it because it, it was changing the way I was looking at money. But anyway, after coming away from that season, I started to look at, um, he has a bunch of really great forms that help you plan for budgeting. There's irregular income, which um, I think a lot of people actually have. And fortunately, ours is not wildly irregular, but it is irregular. We get paid every Friday and it's a little bit different each time. I never get a paycheck that is, you know, $1,500 every single time. It's not like that. <laughs> it would be a lot easier if it was, but it's not. So anyway, that's why I say irregular income is because I, I need to know how to pay our bills, but not knowing exactly how much we're going to, how much we're going to get paid. So Back to the forms, there's a bunch of really great forms on Dave Ramsey's website and we'll actually post the link in the description of the video if you want to check them out. So after using those forms for a few years, I wanted to, I wanted to show you where I, because I needed to have a process that was my own that made sense to the way my brain thinks. And I think it's important for you too that if you're starting budgeting, find something that works for you. And if it's not exactly what Dave Ramsey has, that's okay. As long as you're understanding where your money's going, and how much you need and you know so on and so forth it doesn't matter what it looks like because I'm about to show you my mad skills of drawing a calendar so here's here's where the process started and then I'm gonna walk you through to where we are now we're a techie family but I need to have my hands on something and I needed to have a piece of paper that I could hang on my fridge that I could see and that my husband could see um, I, I just needed to feel it um, and so this is a couple years ago and so what I did is I created a calendar um, this is for November of 2015 and what I did is I wrote down the day that every single bill was due and then at the bottom of the page I listed them out and I put how much it was gonna cost and then I created a total that total was how much we need to pay our bills we're talking mortgage and utilities, food, gas, and then on here I also have, um, you know, a date night and that that type of thing. So I got a pretty good idea of what it costs to run our household, which I feel like is really important because before this I I knew there were reoccurring bills, but I would find myself sometimes surprised, like I would get a bill in the mail for the car insurance, and it's like, ee! and I didn't like that feeling. So with this, I was able to look on the fridge and say, okay, so on um, Monday the second we need to pay our utility bill, our mortgage, and we're gonna make a credit card payment. Um, because as I said, we've gone through seasons, you know, sometimes we have credit card bills and sometimes we pay it all off. Um, so this is what started the process and that helped me figure out, okay, when we get paid on Friday the 6th and Friday the 20th, I need to pay these bills because this is when they're due. Okay, so that is where we started. So let's move over really quick. I A few years ago, I purchased a um, calendar whiteboard and it was probably the best thing ever <laughs> because my husband 
um, is not so much into looking at the calendar on the computer and so this is strategically placed next to where he makes his protein shake every morning <laughs> and so I have I have um, helped him remind him look at the calendar look at the calendar so not only does it have when our bills are due but it also has what are you know if we have appointments or things we need to get done or things we need to remember it's all on the, the calendar over there so let me show you what that looks like real quick so as you can see I just write in the days we're, we're already in October but down here is the rest of September I've got my utility bill um, right here so we get paid this Friday and we have the utility bill now that's not due until the 3rd of October but I get paid on we get paid on Friday so I'm gonna pay that bill on Friday and then moving up here um, we have our internet is due our mortgage is due the internet is actually not due until the 10th but again we get paid Friday so I'm gonna pay that on this Friday and then we have our car insurance and then we have our cell phone provider um, but this also has we're going out to brunch this day our oldest gets out of school at 1.30. She's having a party. I need to return the library books and so on and so forth. This is kind of our dashboard. So we do this in addition to the weekly that I'm gonna show you here in just a moment. Okay, so in addition to the, the whiteboard calendar that I have, I also have this um, little notebook that I write things down in because we don't do checks, um, I guess, I don't know. I. <laughs> I have a thing with fraud and checks and anyway we don't do checks we just use our debit cards but in order to be absolutely 100% sure that we know where our money's going and what our balance is at all times um, I, I do this as well we could always check our bank and we do but this is just a little bit of um, reassurance for me um, now as I mentioned we we have you know the irregular paychecks and so when we get paid um, Typically, I make a decision, okay, this is how much money we're going to spend this week. This is how much we need in order to get everything accomplished. So we, we take a number, this is for the past two weeks. And so let's say on the 15th, I looked at the bank and said, okay, we're gonna use $550 this week to get everything that we need accomplished. And so I basically have my starting number and these are the things that we have to do each week. So, or well, maybe not every week, like gas, maybe not every week, but this week we needed to do, to do gas, we needed to do groceries, we needed to pay the utilities, and Costco is, I'm gonna just be real here, Costco's every week. <laughs> I think I need a job at Costco. Costco, are you hiring? <laughs> Cause I, I, I'm there a lot, I feel like. I know people's names. Anyway, Costco. Uh, and then we have our bug guy, our pest control, because I'm from Alaska and we worry about bears, not roaches. And so if there's anything that crawls around here, I call <laughs> my poor bug guy. Anyway, he comes, he sprays, he's amazing, love him. Um, so we got our bug guy and then gas for the husband. So at the end of all of that, um, we have $86 left of our budgeted amount and I'm gonna move that over into a savings account or into an emergency fund. Now, for those of you that don't know what an emergency fund is, uh, check out Dave Ramsey, but basically set $1,000 back. I know it might take a little while to get there, and that's totally cool, but if you have that $1,000 set back, if you get slapped with, um, you need a new tire, or your brakes need to be redone, or, um, I don't know, you go over on your internet bill. <laughs> I don't know, it's happened to us. Uh, and it's expensive, then you have that $1,000 that's just hanging out over there and it's for emergencies. That way you're avoiding putting things on your credit card or going into debt or being late on a bill. Um, it's, and it, it also provides a tremendous sense of security to know that you have that $1,000 savings. Um, so anyway, so we've got, we've moved that over into our savings. Now this is for the next week and we've got, again, with the irregular, we have $700 that I am going to work with this week. So we've got some money that we put aside for savings and for our mortgage. We're gonna do groceries and Costco again. <laughs> we have to pay the cell phone bill. We're gonna pay our secondary insurance. And then this week there isn't really that much left over, but we've got a little bit that we can move over into savings. Um, as you know as well you know I have my calendar that says 
um, you need to pay your car insurance on this day. And I, I got all that. That's like the big picture. But this is basically my weekly snapshot. And that helps me stay um, within our budgeted amount. Um, so we don't have to go to savings or we don't have to think, oh, we need the credit card or whatever. Um, so this is, this is what I have found that works really well for us. Well, what about when you want to buy something that doesn't really fit into that? How do you do that? Um, and that's definitely something that we, you know, we experience that for sure because there are other little things that come up. We, in this season that we're in right now, we are being extremely careful with our money. It hasn't always been this way. We've certainly made more money in the past and I'm certain that in the future we will again make more money. But right now, it's important to us to stay as much out of debt as possible um, and to be good stewards of the money that we have. I want to set a good example for our children. I don't want to have a bunch of debt when we finally start making more money because I don't, you know, I want to be able to enjoy it. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we are being really, really very careful with our money. So as an example, um, I like really nice shampoo and conditioner, okay? Right? I like it. And it's um, kind of expensive because I buy the big things. So how do I how do I do that? That's going to be $60, $70, $80, right? How do I do that? Well, what I do right now is that 80, you know, 80 something dollars that you saw left over that we moved over into savings. I'm going to earmark some of that and I'm going to say, okay, after, um, you know, a few weeks of putting in a little bit extra putting in, you know, or the leftover money that we didn't, that we came from our check after a few weeks, I'm going to go ahead and get it. But it having to do that creates its patience. And so, um, I don't always get what I want right when I want it. And that's a discipline that I've had to learn and it's not easy. And it sometimes it doesn't win, <laughs> um, but for the most part it does. And so I'm gonna set money back. I'm gonna set it aside. If it's easier for you to get cash, go get cash, put it in an envelope. And then, and then when it's time, then I'm gonna buy my shampoo or whatever. But we have money in savings that we have available for things that come up or if our daughter um, just did pictures at school um, and I knew about two week a week or two weeks in advance And so we set aside a little bit extra. We just paid cash for her for her pictures I guess the point is in the season we're in right now impulse Buying there really isn't any room for it. So if there's something that you want or you know that you want save for it and in about two three weeks when you have the money for it if you want it, you'll feel okay spending that money. If it comes time and you've got this nice little, you know, say you've got $100 saved and you look at this thing and you're like, I like my $100 better, <laughs> then, then you know, it's, that's, that's okay too because this learned patience is going to cut down on impulse buying and things that you don't really need at the moment. Um, at least that's been my experience. I hope that uh, some of this has been of help and I wish you guys all the best in your budgeting endeavors. If you have any budgeting tricks or any thoughts on the video, please leave them in the comments. I'm definitely always looking for ways to, you know, work the budget and make it better. So if you have any thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like our video, please click like and uh, we would love to invite you to be a subscriber. We've got over 60 videos of family stuff and baby stuff, now budgeting, and we'll probably actually talk about budgeting a little bit more in the future as things, as our situation changes. Oh, and we have a Facebook page. It's The KT Files, and we also have our blog. It's familylifeandlove.org. Yeah, so we would love for you guys to join us there as well. I hope you all are having a wonderful week. Thank you so much for watching and till next time. Bye.